Okay, so here's our problem. We have a flat plate in a supersonic flow. And we haven't learned anything about supersonic flows yet, but this one is one we can deal with. So assume that the angle of attack alpha that the plate is making with the free stream is small. The pressure on the lower surface will be called PL, and the pressure on the su upper surface is PU. And we assume both are uniform with PL larger than PU. So how do we start? Well, we're going to write the expression for a, a dynamic force. The pressure term and the viscous stresses term. Now in this case, we're going to assume that the flow is inviscid, so we're going to cross out the tau and simply write the integral of the pressure. If we split into the upper and the lower surface, we have PL and L, normal on the lower surface, and then the upper surface. And both upper and lower surface have surface area S. So the normals are always taken to point outward from the surface. So on the upper surface, N points in the plus Z direction. This is an U. And on the lower surface, it's opposite, minus Z direction. And we'll take N for the plate in general to be in the positive Z direction. So we can see that NU is same as N, and the normal vector NL is minus N. So we can go back to our expression and write that A is PL minus PU, both normal N, times the surface area. Or simply the pressure difference times the surface area in the plus D direction. Now, we're being asked about lift and drag. So if we go back to our figure here, this is our aerodynamic force, delta P S N. And we can decompose that the customary way into lift, L, and drag, D. Drag being in the streamwise direction, L in the direction normal to the free stream. And, of course, the angle alpha. So now we project A into those two directions. We get that lift the delta P S cosine alpha and the D is delta P S sine alpha. Now in terms of non-dimensional coefficients, lift coefficient is simply lift divided by the dynamic pressure and S one half of rho infinity V infinity square cosine alpha. Similarly for CD, so the question is how do lift coefficient and drag coefficients scale with delta P? Well, you can see it here. Simply CL is proportional to delta P, and also CD is proportional to delta P. So both lift and drag coefficient scale linearly with the pressure difference delta P, that is M equal to 1. Now what about the ratio? Lift of drag, which is the same as the ratio of the coefficients. Well, the first part is the same, and then you have cosine alpha for lift, sine alpha for drag.
and that's the same as the inverse of the tangent. Now, so far we didn't make, haven't made any assumptions about alpha, but this is where we're going to start. Small angle approximation. What a small angle means is that alpha is much smaller than one radian. And remember, you have to measure in radians. Now, in that case, we can approximate cosine alpha by 1 and sine alpha by alpha. Also, if you want, the tangent is more or less alpha. So, we're going to write that L over D is close to 1 over alpha. And this is the expression for the lift to drag ratio as a function of alpha for small angles. Now, let me clean up a little bit here. So, from these expressions, we can see that Cl is proportional to delta P and to cosine alpha, which we approximate as 1. So, I'll simply write Cl proportional to delta P. Now, we're going to assume that for small alphas, delta P is proportional to alpha. And we'll see the arguments behind this when we go and study supersonic flows. So that means that we can simply say that CL is proportional to alpha. What about CD? Well, you still have that delta P, and you have a sinus alpha, which will approximate as alpha. So when you should put those two together, delta P proportional to alpha, and then an alpha, you get the square. So, lift is proportional to alpha, linearly, m equal 1, and drag is proportional to alpha square, m equal 2, so quadratic.